In the final days of November 2025, China quietly dropped a shockwave into the strategic landscape of the Western Pacific. A private Beijing-based aerospace firm, Lingkong Tianxing Technology, publicly unveiled a new container-launched hypersonic missile, the YKJ-1000. What looked at first like another flashy demo from a tech startup quickly turned into a deeply political, deeply calculated message aimed at Japan, the United States, and anyone watching the balance of power in Asia. The company released a test and promotional video that spread across Chinese social media within hours. It showed a live launch from a remote desert range. Then came the computer-generated climax, a formation of hypersonic missiles arcing toward a stylized map of Japan. For China's online audience, it was cinematic pride. For defense analysts across the region, it raised more serious questions about readiness, intent, and deterrence. Lingkong Tianxing claims the YKJ-1000 is already in mass production. And what truly caught everyone's attention wasn't just the missile's performance, it was the price tag. According to the company, this weapon costs nearly 90% less than traditional hypersonic missiles. If that figure is anywhere close to accurate, then China isn't just advancing hypersonic technology, it's industrializing it. Technically, the YKJ-1000 follows a boost glide architecture. It uses a solid rocket booster to push the missile into the upper atmosphere, where a maneuvering glide vehicle takes over. But unlike older designs that simply coast, this one carries an additional rocket engine on the glider, allowing powered maneuvers deep into its flight path. The result is a weapon capable of sustained speeds between Mach 5 and Mach 7, with around 360 seconds of powered crews before it transitions to a pure glide attack. What makes it even more dangerous is the launch system. The missile sits hidden inside what looks like a normal commercial shipping container, mounted on a truck with fold-out stabilizers. That means it can blend into civilian traffic during peacetime and disperse across ordinary roads in wartime, a hypersonic threat hiding in plain sight mobile, unpredictable, and extremely hard to preempt. Guidance is where the YKJ-1000 tries to separate itself from older designs. Reports in Chinese media claim that once launched, the missile can automatically identify targets, adjust course, and perform evasive maneuvers mid-flight. The company also advertises advanced onboard sensors that allow the missile to conduct high-speed reconnaissance passes, sprinting in, gathering data, and pulling back before striking. Future variants are being developed with AI-driven decision-making and swarm collaboration. That means groups of missiles will be able to share data, split tasks, deceive defenses, and overwhelm targets from multiple angles. Some vehicles can act as decoys, others as sensors, and others as the actual warhead carriers. For modern defense systems, that kind of teamwork is a nightmare. The range bracket of 500 to 1300 kilometers is tailor-made for the Western Pacific. From coastal regions in Fujian or Zhejiang, the upper range easily covers Okinawa, Kyushu, and major U.S. and Japanese bases like Kadena, Naha, Sasebo, and Iwakuni. Even most of Taiwan and the Riku Islands sit inside the envelope. A Mach 7 strike from China's east coast to Okinawa would reach its target in just a few minutes, barely enough time for early warning sensors to detect, classify, and track the incoming threat. And with its low, maneuvering terminal flight path, the YKJ-1000 is designed to slip between radar horizons and evasion gaps that traditional ballistic or cruise missiles fail to exploit. China's hypersonic arsenal has expanded rapidly in recent years. The DF-17, with its GFZF glide vehicle, provides medium-range strikes out to around 2,500 kilometers. 
the YJ-21 hypersonic anti-ship missile threatens carrier groups at roughly 1,000 to 1,500 kilometers. And earlier this year, China revealed the CJ-1000, an ultra-long-range plane killer said to target airborne assets thousands of kilometers away. In this lineup, the YKJ-1000 fills a new niche, a cheaper, highly mobile, mass-produced theater weapon that can be deployed in large numbers. Lingkong Chansing is not just any startup. The company is already tied into China's major aerospace programs, working on reusable rockets, hypersonic space planes, and suborbital tourism platforms. Their engineers claim participation in state-level research projects. In other words, the same technologies meant to send tourists into near space or deliver ultra-fast civilian transport are now being folded into tactical missiles. If the YKJ-1000 is truly as cheap as advertised, then China is shifting hypersonic weapons from rare strategic assets to high-volume tools of conventional war. The final frame of the promotional video, eight YKJ-1000 missiles streaking toward Japan, was not an accident. Media outlets like the South China Morning Post noted its political timing. Japan is rewriting its defense strategy, investing in counter-strike capabilities, and deepening military cooperation with the United States. By showing the missile flying directly toward the Japanese archipelago, the company sent a message that echoed far beyond its domestic audience. It suggested that Japanese cities and bases now sit under a short-notice hypersonic threat, and that China wants both its regional neighbors and Washington to understand this reality. For the United States and its allies, the problem is more complex than intercepting a single missile. Hypersonic defense requires new sensors, new interceptors, and new operational concepts. Washington and Tokyo are working on space-based tracking constellations and a joint glide phase interceptor, but these systems are years away from deployment. Meanwhile, many aspects of the YKJ-1000 remain unverified. Its payload, accuracy, and whether it has been formally adopted by the PLA, but the signal is unmistakable. To the Chinese public, it showcases how private firms are leading innovation. To Japan, it warns that any crisis over Taiwan or the East China Sea would unfold under the shadow of precise, extremely fast strikes on their homeland. And to the United States, it hints that countering China's hypersonic salvos may demand not just new missiles, but an entirely new approach to basing, dispersal, and resilience across the first and second island chains. The YKJ-1000 is more than a missile. It is a message delivered at hypersonic speed. This is Mighty Military. Stay sharp, stay informed.